Yeah, I agree that this concept is uh, relatively new in China. But actually, um, all over the world, this is not a new one. Well, we can see that uh, more and more big companies, especially the financial financial institutions, they are appointing appointing their management as a CSO. I think under some situations, the CSO is uh, is very important for the organizations. Uh, first is the um, the expectation of the external uh, shareholders. Uh, if the expectation is very high, the current uh, governance structure, the management structure cannot meet that expectation. So the organization may need the CSO to pl play such kind of role to coordinate internally and externally. And uh, uh, the other reason is that the, the fast changing external regulations. Uh, all over the world, including in China, we can see more and more new regulations announced. Is this only and, for Chinese companies doing business in China, or is it for uh, businesses uh, externally as well? Yeah, you know, under current uh, climate change uh, topic, no one can stay alone. So uh, any company, uh, even their, their business is only in China, I think uh, due to the supply chain, due to their uh, customer uh, expectation, they need to play uh, all over the world. So this is not a, a topic for the multinational company. Uh, are Chinese companies, do you think, performing well in their sustainable development? Let's call it that. Um, I can say the situation is, um, quant uh, is quite com uh, complicated. You know, China is a big, a big country, and a lot of uh, companies are in different stages. Uh, I can say that for more mature and bigger company, they they are more uh, focusing on the improvement of the uh, of the social responsibility, their climate change KPI. But for the uh, smaller company, maybe their focus is the how to survive, how to <laughs> gain more money. So right. you know. So, but it's that balance, isn't it, for the companies because they've got uh, responsibilities to shareholders. Um, you know, they've got their uh, accounts, but they need to make money, but they also need to be sustainable. So that's a hard balance, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think this is a um, very interesting balance uh, between the uh, short-term and the long-term interests. But fortunately, we, we can see that more and more companies, especially their stakeholders, their board, are more interested in the long-term sustainable development especially under the current climate, uh, climate change situation. I mean, your sustainability and climate leader for Deloitte, which is largely a, an accountancy firm, so how can you make Deloitte more sustainable? Does that mean just use less paper? <laughs> it's part of that. Uh, I can say it's quite a complicated one for Deloitte. Uh, you know, we are a big organization. And so globally and in China, we announced our ambitious uh, goal for the climate change. Uh, actually, we will achieve our net zero by, uh, by uh, 2030. So uh, as, uh, as a service leader in China, actually, I'm playing the supporting role to our management to uh, actually to, to manage our pathway to achieve the net zero. That must be a tough job. I mean, you're talking about nine years away. Well, less than that, really, sort of eight years away, 2030. You're going to have to do a lot of cutting, aren't you, and a lot of persuading. <laughs> um, I think there is a lot of um, uh, incentives for us to do such kind of transformation. Uh, you know, under the current COVID-19 situation, the travel is very, very difficult. But at the same time, we need to serve our client well. So such kind of transformation can save cost and protect our people. And at the same time, we can reduce our carbon emission. Uh, so we are doing the, uh, a lot of changes about our uh, travel, uh, travel policy. And uh, we will also change our uh, staff's behavior. And at the same time, to manage the expectation of different clients. What do you hope from COP26? And also, do you expect to receive criticism as the biggest polluter in the world? Um, I know that the, uh, there are a lot of things in the, uh, in the agenda of COP26. And uh, personally, actually, my expectation is 
I have very high expectation on the um, on the uh, timeline, the shared timetable. You mean that uh, no matter how 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 much argument there, I think we need to take action. So a shared agreed uh, timetable is very important for the for the uh, for every countries for the community. So I think that can uh, facilitate all of the different uh, players, different roles uh, to take action. Alan Shi and many thanks for joining us on the agenda. Okay, thank you.